Hey, 951 listeners, it's your host, Casey Lovell, and today we're going to be talking about all things technology because, as many of you know, technology has very much become a huge, huge part of the sports world, and with so many different types of sports technology out there or new technology being developed, I think it's important to really have a conversation about maybe the good and bad of sports technology, but also ways that you can utilize it to help you either as an athlete, a coach, as a parent, whoever you are. So this episode today is actually part one of a two-part technology series with two sports tech companies. So you will have to tune in today, listen to this one, and then we will have in the coming weeks part two of our technology series where we talk with someone from a different sports tech company about how technology has really invaded the sports world and how it's changing it and how you can jump on board with some of this great technology. So before we get started today, I want you guys to go to our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and shoot us a message with what episodes you have really loved, what do you like the most about these episodes, and we're here to provide you with the content that you actually want to hear, and that will be applicable, helpful, relatable to where you are at as an athlete in your life, or as a parent, or as a coach. So back to our episode, our guest speaker today is going to be Neil Anderson, and Neil is the CEO and founder of a tech sports company called Skillshark. So here's what Skillshark is all about in their own words. On their website, it says, Skillshark gives you a completely customizable athlete evaluation experience that allows you to run tryouts, camps, and team assessments with ease. And so that's just kind of a short description of what they provide, but they provide so many things and their software is so, so customizable to even people outside of the sports world. But during the episode, Neil will really talk about different features of Skillshark and like I said, how it can be customized to specifically fit your team, your organization, and whatever you need. So join Neil and I today as we talk about technology and the role that it's really began to play in the sports world. So let's dive in. Neil, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to have you and so excited to talk on the topic of technology and even specifically what your company offers, but just technology and how it's really booming and changing the game. So Neil, thank you again so much for joining me today. Great to be here, Casey. Very appreciated. Before we really dive into talking about technology and how it really is changing the game and you're seeing it everywhere, I mean, literally everywhere, Before we get into that, can you just tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? For sure. Um, So my name is Neil Anderson. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of a tech sports company called Skillshark. So I'm I'm an engineer by background and I've coached for a lot of years and saw the need for a product to simplify athlete evaluations, getting away from pen and paper and clipboards and then spending weeks doing data entry and in the end doing very little with the information that you spend hours gathering. So with Skillshark, we simplify the entire process, allowing coaches of any sport to gather the information through their mobile device or tablet. And before the kids even have their cleats off, the coaches can be sorting the kids onto teams if they want, provide individual report cards back to the players, including videos of their performance, comments from the evaluators on development. And uh, it's a a much better communication path for athletes. Yeah. So with Skillshark, what made you think of that or how did you kind of see a gap and strive to fill it with Skillshark? Sure. So the, the guys that I took the program over from were incredibly knowledgeable guys on the sport of ball. They they have national titles under their belt. They know the sport very well, but it's they weren't doing anything really well with the information that they were gathering. So, for example, in the case of ball, mm-hmm. they were measuring kids in five different areas, hitting, bunting, infield, outfield, and speed, giving them a score at a 10, adding it up at a 50, and then ranking the kids from best to worst. 
And you're making a whole lot of bad assumptions doing that. You're assuming the weighting importance of hitting in that case is the same as bunting. And we all know that that's not true. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of saw what they were doing and how they were, they had good information, knowledge on the game. You just came in to try to apply that in a different way, in a way that could help athletes more. Exactly. So any, any sports organization doing uh, youth evaluations using pen, paper, and clipboards, I think they'd all agree when they really think about it is that they're really not doing a lot with that data. Yeah. So Skillshark just helps them do, it helps youth sport organizations take that data and actually make it actionable. Yes. And I know as we go through these questions more, you'll get into Skillshark a little bit more, but for all the listeners, I will put a link to their website in the about section of this episode. So you can go to it. You can click on it. You can go check their stuff out, but you know, just talking on technology and especially you being in the technology world with Skillshark, you know, how have you seen that technology play a part and why do you think it's so important as we just continue to get more technologically sound why is it so important for coaches, players, whoever, to embrace this technology? Great question. So any parent or any young athlete who's been playing a sport for, let's say, five or six years would probably agree on two key things. One is that after an evaluation happens or after most camps happen, they get the athletes and parents get very, very little feedback as to what they need to work on, and also more, also equally important, is somebody telling them what they did well, which helps build a, a young athlete's confidence. None of that is going on right now with pen and paper processes because it's too darn hard. Yeah. So uh, Skillshark, by applying this technology, helps increase the ease of communication from sports organizations to the athletes and parents to help them push along their development plan. Yeah. And I will say I didn't go to a ton. I think in baseball, now they're trying to make this more popular in softball, but I think in baseball, the evaluations, as far as you're going to these camps, you're they're like scouting camps, you're getting evaluated. You're doing just certain skills over and over a lot with softball is still just, you know, exposure tournaments and going to camps at specific schools. But when I think about the camps that I went to at certain schools, there was practically no feedback. And camps are on a, on a little bit different level because it's hard because unless a coach specifically is recruiting you or knows that you are there, you've been in contact with them, there's probably not a lot of contact anyway. And you're not getting a ton of feedback besides maybe coaches or players walking around and giving you a tip here and there. But outside of that, it is very scarce on, in my opinion, in the softball side that you will hear that feedback or know that feedback. Yes, I would agree that the feedback is very slim and you're, you know, like you're saying, even at, you know, PBR camps or whatever it is, they're probably not getting things to the extent they need to or done in the right way that lets them know, here's where I'm at, here's where I want to be. Uh, I was just going to add, uh, so one of the key things that we're just about to release to our user base, which is getting great reviews uh, from the concept from our existing users, is to allow you a youth sport organization who have this library of developmental videos, you know, like, for example, in the case of softball, let's say a a developmental video that's tagged to how to infield the ball properly. If somebody gives a kid a score in Skillshark between zero and 10 on a subjective scale, you can set up a rule saying that any kid who gets a score lower than five or six, whatever you set it up to be, automatically gets tagged this developmental video to watch. And for you sport organizations who have this library of developmental videos already built in their arsenal from decades of coaching. Yeah. It makes it so easy to pass along that knowledge. Yeah, that's really great. And especially I think with the age we're in right now, you're actually seeing virtual lessons and virtual training, which now with the, you know, the COVID-19 and the pandemic that we're hopefully coming out of, you know, you've seen that even more of hitting instructors going to 
virtual trainings, when you're saying that, I thought of like, okay, even in that sense of virtual training, you know, if they would score them and give them back things and then, you know, they're sending them videos, letting them know what to do. So that could be beneficial in that way as well. Absolutely. One of our newest customers, they're actually just about to, especially with the, the COVID situation going on, they're about to have their first competition. Now, this isn't a team sport. It's uh, it's actually a baton twirling group. They're They're actually holding their first remote competition. So the athletes are sending in their athlete performance videos on Skillshark and the coaches are evaluating them from their laptops at home and giving the school back. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And can you go into that more and just talk about who can this best apply to as far as using your software? You know, you've talked about different organizations, but how have you seen this help more than just this specific type of organization or this specific type? Yeah. And I I guess to give the full picture, it's not just athletes that Skillshark is being used for. It's also for the officials, for coaches. We've had, we've had Skillshark because it's so customizable. We've had it also be used outside of the sports world for employee evaluations or even things as obscure as Filipino karaoke contests. (laughs) Um, So it's really usable by any, like there's so many different evaluation applications for it that uh, uh, globally Skillshark is being used around the world for things in Europe, for example, alpine skiing in France and Italy, non-team sports like golf in England, uh, just to evaluate a person's technique or mechanics, uh, and a few others. I like how that's so broad and that Skillshark is so customizable. And like I said in the beginning, there's so many different types of technologies out there. Uh, I was talking to someone else who I'm having on the podcast about technology. You know, I went to the where I met you, that NFCA conference, and all the way from your type of technology to I went over to someone where you can strap these little sensors all over your body and you swing and it gives you a 3d picture of yourself and your swing. So with a bunch of technologies out there, what do you think athletes or parents or coaches or whoever, what do you think they need to do to educate themselves about what's right for them or just what types of technologies that they should even be looking at? Yeah, the the I, I'd say the one thing is, for example, some of the instruments that you talk about uh, won't get into brands or anything. But you know, if you've got an accelerometer type of device, which most of them are based on accelerometers, mm-hmm. that it measures 101 variables of a of a kid's mechanics. Really, that's a lot of overkill. That yeah, the the instrument can measure certain things, but in practical use you only really can use three or four of those variables. So um, I, I think the key thing is just to focus on focus on what you can control. Yeah, and I mean, and even something like, like that, you know, even if you're saying, okay, I'm only going to focus on these variables, I think what you're saying there is focusing on things you can control. So also focusing on things that will actually apply to you as an athlete that aren't maybe – really broad, but you can individualize to yourself because, you know, there's been a lot of discussions about technology in the sports world of what things are actually helping athletes and what things are hurting athletes because it's either overkill or they're overthinking it or whatever else it is. So yes, I would agree with that. And I also think some of these technologies, you know, with your software, you could use them to even get data to put in there, however coaches or organizations want to use that. Yeah, here here's one of the key things that you just touched on. And that's going back to your example of the company that has an instrument that measures a whole bunch of different things. Uh, there is a growing concern or it's it's becoming more and more acknowledged by coaches and organizations across the country that athletes, especially young athletes, it's not really the the objective measurements like their bad exit velocity or that kind of thing that is becoming more important. It's actually the subject of things which Skillshark can also measure, like their mental toughness, their 
um, the coach's perception of their coachability, uh, their character, those things are becoming more and more important because there is a growing identifiable thing that's happening with young athletes that they're not as mentally tough yeah. as they might have been years ago. Yeah. Lar- yeah. It's largely believed that it has to do with the effect of social media on young athletes and potentially building insecurities in them. But uh, as coaches, we need to do what we can to build up the mental toughness and give them confidence in their abilities. And Skillshark does a, a fantastic job of that by providing them more feedback on what they're doing well. Yeah. And I actually, again, the other person I was talking to about technology, we had a discussion about this, about all the intangible skills. Cause they were talking about, you know, if you have a system that says, this is a measurement of what makes you good at this, or this is how you're supposed to do this specific mechanical thing in your swing, which not that any of that in and of itself is necessarily bad, but that doesn't also look at the intangibles of, you know, that athlete's body build, that athlete's natural abilities to where maybe they could swing a little bit different than another athlete and get away with it because they're just, that's how their body naturally works and flows or, you know, and then we talked about in the mental game area. So I would definitely agree there, especially mental game wise that, you know, people would also focus on those skills because that's why I like to talk about technology, look in technology about how it is changing the game. And from what you're saying, we probably just both hope that it doesn't get to the point where people are so focused on the technicalities and the mechanics of just their physical skills that they get away from working on mental game, working on visualization, working on even working on just being an athlete. Just like everything, there's pros and cons technology world. Same thing, you know, with social media, there's good things about it. But then we've also seen the repercussions, like you said, of how that really does affect athletes. I think it was Bryce Harper that quoted, I'd rather be a good player off the field than a great player on the field. I think more and more coaches are becoming very aware building an athlete's character and self-confidence is more important than improving their hitting mechanics. Absolutely. And I mean, a lot of people would also say you have a lot of athletes who after high school, their career is over or after college, their career is over. There's a very small percentage that actually go on to play professionally. And even after they do play professionally, you're not going to do that forever when you step outside the sports world, because at some point you will, as far as physically playing, what have you learned? What has sports taught you? Have you grown from the time you started playing ball to now I'm stepping out of, you know, professional athletics. And like I said, I talked to a lot of girls even about the recruiting process and I've seen so many athletes, their concern is just the name of the school, who wants to recruit me, who wants me instead of looking at a school holistically, because after four years, that's over. And the rest of your life is also very important. So yes, I I would definitely agree with that. (laughs) Yeah, that is. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> we could probably have a whole conversation on on that one. Yeah. So, Neil, could you just tell listeners real quick how they can look at your stuff? So, like I said, I'll put a website link, but can you tell me what your website is and then what social media outlets are you on? For sure. Um, so, our website is skillshark.com. And anybody that goes to our site can request a one hour uh, one on one tutorial over the web with one of our onboarding specialists. Uh, You can also, when you create your first account, before you even spend a penny, you can actually just use it to uh, create a group of up to 25 athletes, create a a group specific to your sport, and play around with it uh, before you even really spend spend any of your money. So it gives you a good opportunity to test it out and prove it's going to work for you. And so on social media outlets, we're on Facebook and Twitter primarily. Facebook uh, is probably our where the bulk of our demographic lives and breathes. So yeah, Facebook is the strongest one. All right. Well, listeners, again, I'm going to have that link and then you can go follow them on social media and just go check that out or, you know, parents, coaches, anyone can go check that out because it is very versatile and customizable. So Neil, thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us about 
you know, the technology that you're involved in, but just the world of technology and, and what that looks like today. So Neil, thank you so much for coming on the 951 podcast today. My pleasure. And I'll just add one other comment. Uh, on our website under resources, you'll see uh, we have our weekly challenges. So uh, for athletes that want to get into competition in this time of isolation, you can go on there and try out a, uh, a weekly challenge to see how you rank on a national leaderboard against others. Hey, everyone, and thank you so much for listening to the 951 podcast. But before you go, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. And then tell all your friends, teammates, or really whoever you want to listen to the 951 podcast so that they can be ignited in their sports and faith journey.